basically, how does the question in brick and mortar institutions today is how does me, IT media strike a balance between integrating the latest and greatest new technologies and attract students to colleges with the promise of all the best in technologies that they have to offer while keeping the faculty in a familiar space that they can use and not be afraid of. And the reality is that most tenured faculty continue to teach the way they've been teaching for years, regardless of the technology that's made available to them in the, in the um, classroom. Personally, I've been threatened with bodily harm to remove an overhead projector. I'm sure that others um, might um, have had that same type of experience as we move forward. According to Educause, which is one of the higher institutions of um, higher education, they do a lot of research in the United States and abroad as to the current and moving, um, uh, moving um, trends that are happening. In 2009, they came out and said that what we really need to focus on are creating learning environments, engaging those students, and having our faculty adopt innovation. This, of course, leads to preconceived notions on what classrooms should look like, what faculty need and should do with technology and their readiness to do with it, and what the role of technology is to teaching and learning. And of course, IT, media, facilities, faculty, students, um, administration, everyone has a different idea as to what and how this should be answered. And it usually leads to a gap in understandings between what should be in a classroom and what shouldn't. So it came that the technology in the rooms that we started with in one of the colleges that I was um, looking at, that the faculty said the technology just didn't work. And as many IT people know, that it's not necessarily that the technology didn't work. The technology didn't do what the faculty had expected the technology should do, right? Projectors turned on, they just didn't do what faculty thought they should. So we decided to try and come up with faculty-friendly classrooms. Now, what exactly does that mean? In our minds, faculty-friendly meant that faculty wanted to be able to enter a classroom and teach not to worry about whether or not the technology worked as I stood up here and couldn't figure out the German for slideshow, right? The technology just should work. A person can walk in and be able to use whatever technologies they need without any specific or hardcore or a long-term type of training um, situation. IT and media, on the other hand, needed the technology to be easily maintained. Most institutions don't have the funding to have large IT staff supporting the kinds of technology that are in the classrooms. And of course, the students, they want to go to a college that is on the cutting edge because that's what's attracting them now, at least in the United States, they talk about um, uh, recruitment and retention, big keywords on how do we recruit students and how do we how do we retain them. So the solution that we came up with is that faculty and students want technology that is transparent, meaning that it's the same basic technology structure from classroom to classroom, centered around a smart lectern. So. The lectern does everything that they need to do is contained in that lectern. And that every classroom is consistent wherever they go on campus, um, whether you have several campuses or whether you have one large campus or one small campus, the design of the room and the design of the technologies is, has at least a consistent 
feel to it. Technology needs to be supportable and maintainable by a small support staff. You don't want to have more IT support um, people than you do faculty or students. You want to keep the, the support team manageable. Big problem for this is that many different um, campuses and locales within a college system or different departments demand different types of technologies per classroom. Each discipline has their own separate and different needs from a basic projector to simulation dummies and cameras set up all over the room so that you can have you know, um, demonstrations being focused upon. So our solution was for faculty and the students, we needed to come up with a design that was sleek and sexy and attractive looking. Because nobody wants to walk into a room and trip over wires that crisscross around the rooms. For the media team, it needed to be easily supportable. Um, I hope no faculty members here take offense to this, but all extraneous buttons needed to be removed, right? So if there was, we made it so that there's only one way you can control volume or one way you can turn on a projector. Because what we found is that many classrooms have many different ways to control the different types of technology in a classroom. And most uh, instructors try and use one way, which isn't necessarily the way that's going to provide the result that they needed. And of course for the institution, the solution needed to be economical. They weren't going to give us a blank check and say go out and do whatever you want to do and purchase whatever you want to purchase. So after eight months of research, we found and we tested different types of technology and a proposal was uh, put forth to adopt the Utelogy management platform and install TechPod presenter lecterns. These are um, smart lecterns, and I'll show you. Here we go. Utelogy is based on a software platform that everything is controlled by an internet protocol, IP. So we put a switch on the projector and it's controllable by IP and it's draggable and droppable on the um, support side into a menu that looks, let me see if I can get this there, that would be our common menu. So there would be a standard type of menu in each room and every driver could be dragged and dropped by the technology support team. The TechPod presenter allowed us to have everything from a, a pen display on the top so instructors could write to something that was extremely important for uh, the faculty at this college and that was being height adjustable. When I was asked this morning if I would, if everybody was willing to stand behind the lectern, I said, well, it depends really on how tall the lectern is. In the United States, I think the lecterns are about a foot higher, so when I usually stand behind one, it comes up to my nose. So one of the things that was very important for our faculty was to have a lectern that was just height adjustable. Um, the tech pod here, as you can see, it's clean. It's not, it's form factor, it's not very, it doesn't take up a lot of space, and that was important. And just to show you some slides as to what I mean by not taking up a lot of space, these are the lecterns and some of the setups that were in the room before we transformed them. And this was a standard setup after they were transformed. So we took away a lot of the extraneous types of hardware, and we went to the form factor fitting lecterns and the software fitting control tabs. We used to have um, Walt 
control panels. Everybody recognizes wall control panels. One of the things about the wall control panels that I personally never liked is that in order to actually turn something on, the instructor would have to turn their back to the wall and you'd actually lose eye contact with your students and the flow of the instruction. But by actually having everything on the screen in front of you and a pen display that you could control while still keeping eye contact was a very important pedagogical uh, goal um, for me. And just um, so you can see, I have another slide here. Just so right there used to be the, the wall plate. We actually took blank plates and covered it up so that nobody would get confused as to which buttons to use um, as they were controlling um, the systems. And like I said, it has to be faculty friendly and IT maintainable, right? Um, some more pictures of before and after looks. And these are some snapshots of what simple control menus look like when they were on the platform. And as you can see, you could choose your input by either the podium, or an lectern, a laptop, or an auxiliary. If you wanted to, and your room had a document camera that was there as well, as well as volume control. I think we kept hearing, make that a little louder, make that a little louder at the beginning um, today. But here, just by a touch screen, I could have controlled the volume um, however we want. Another nice thing about the IntelliJ system that we use is that it's all server controlled. So if a faculty member needs help, down at the bottom of the screen, they can actually choose the help um, button. And if they had a telephone, an IP, you know, a USB controlled telephone, they can actually talk to somebody at the service desk and get an immediate answer. Or somebody from the service desk can go in remotely and turn on the projector, put up the volume, whatever the problem happens to be. My favorite thing about this, though, is that the lecterns actually spoke to us. So we turned, by having it um, run by a server, we turned this piece of metal here, the lectern, and it sent emails to the team before any teachers ever walked into the classroom telling us that there was a problem so that the IT support team would always have a jump start on any issues that might arise uh, before they became real issues and taken away from teaching time from the faculty. So I always like that. To show you some complex rooms, as you can see here, and I'm sure anybody who's taught in some of the classrooms can see a hodgepodge full of um, different um, technologies. The overhead projector, in this room there were two sets of speakers because one worked and one didn't, so nobody ever took out the ones that didn't work, they just added speakers that did work to it. And we were told to make this into a collaboration site, which was scalable. So you see here, we took all that technology that was in the middle of the room and we put an equipment cabinet under a table, so it's actually out of the way. And we ran a line to it to make auxiliaries there because one of the instructors actually wanted to be able to connect his Xbox 360 to the classroom. Um, not quite sure why, but wanted to connect it. So the, the solution that we ha had was, whoops, was, I think I just went back too far, was scalable. Uh, we had 25 different um, project, uh, 25 different screens in that room. The faculty member could control by a more complex menu what they wanted to project where. 
and it created a change process at the college that from facilities coming in and deciding which projectors go in, now IT and academic technology took a much um, a greater stand in the decision making process. We got input from all constituents at the college from the students all the way up to the, the cabinet and we took all their success factors which were academic technology leadership who were able to bring a vision as to what the classrooms should look like. The faculty and instructional designers shared and reflected on new practices that came from this type of room. They were able to concentrate on pedagogy and not on technology. And our results were stunning. People would request the rooms. They would fight over the rooms and ask us when we were getting all the rooms done because, you know, on a budgetary basis, we could only do 10 rooms at a time, really. So people were fighting over this. We got a return on investment, which was very good for the, the cabinet. They actually liked getting, um, getting that. And we believe it's scalable because it's all software-based and IP platform-based so that any new technologies that come in, if we decide to put on a cartoon network or go into Second Life, all we would have to do is create a driver and drop that into the menu and a faculty member would be able to push that button and instantly access whatever it was that they wanted to do. Thank you.